Good morning from Hampton Court Palace. This is the thing I was the most excited to see when we came here to London. It's actually about 30 minutes outside of London. It's really easy to get to from London though. You go to the Waterloo station, subway station and you catch the train there. Um, overall, plan to give yourself about an hour. The train ride itself was only about 40 minutes but it was delayed by 15 minutes and then of course whatever time you need to get to Waterloo Station from wherever you're staying. But once you get here it's really well marked. You just walk right over the bridge and Turn we're right. here. And uh, once again with our London Pass admission is included so we can skip the ticket office and go right in. So come along with us. I can't even tell you ex how excited I am to be here. Um, we're planning to spend the better part of the day here. Apparently there's quite a bit to see and do and they let you pretty much just wander through on your own. And there's interactive stuff. And I, as I've said before, have always been fascinated with that whole Henry VIII period and his six wives and his meddling in the Church of England. So. This is really going to be a cool experience for me. So we've come into the main entrance into the great courtyard. <laughs> And I'm guessing that horses and carriages would have come through this arch right into this courtyard. carrying the goods to feed everyone here at Hampton Court would have come in this passageway into this courtyard and the food would have been paid for here and unloaded and then taken into the kitchens over this is called the master carpenters court and over here are a couple of the areas where servants would have lived and then you would have gone into the kitchens. It's normally spring-loaded. It's well out of service now, but the uh, rod or wire that you see over there would be all the way back, and then you'd have a pivot right here, so all you had to do is pull down, and it would ring the bell on the other side. So it just redirected the force so that the bell, the weight of the bell would control it. Pulling the handle. Cool. So all the rooms down this corridor, because of the stone, would have remained very cold. So it was a, a natural, temporary refrigerator of sorts. This would have stored the fish. And they had separate rooms for the grains and the sugars and the vegetables. Here's another doorbell. <laughs> so now we're going into the great kitchens. Oh, it still smells very smoky. Wow, that's that's what you call a fireplace. Wow. 
So that would have been iron, right? Mm -hmm. They had iron, iron, yeah, very, very, Henry's time. Yes. very, very early. I wonder what these were used for. When Henricus was founded, that was the first uh, mine in the U.S. and that was they made pig iron. <laughs> Jealous of the case. <laughs> but Joe, go in. Joe, Joe. Go in. Just give you this for the guy. So the um, King Henry was thought to have eaten about 75% meat, or his diet was 75% meat. And uh, they're pretty sure he had scurvy because he didn't eat enough fruits and vegetables. They were talking about Elizabeth. She had gout. Yes, and Elizabeth had gout. They would have put the fires under here, kept them going. And all these pots on top. They would have grown their own herbs here. So you have sage, garlic, parsley, rosemary. Onions. What's this one? I think it's allspice. You smell it. Yeah, I think that is allspice. I'm not sure what that is. That looks like rosemary. No, that's rosemary right there. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what it is. It's weed. <laughs> Mark thinks it's a weed. weed. This would be rosemary, which we love in our cooking. Yes. And then some great big leeks and so forth over that's here. Leeks. This is fennel for the fish. Fennel for the mm -hmm. fish. Oh, that's real. Yeah. So these. But this is just the first room of this kitchen. <laughs> We've got some people, some costumed people in here. But did I read that the, this job in particular could have all the ale they wanted? Well, they say that. <laughs> but having done, don't know job, if that's true. Part of our job here is to experiment with things, and if you're on a, a day where you're, I mean, the minimum um, allowance is 450 people twice a day, so you're likely to have a spit in each hand. Right. And no one's right. invented the straw yet. True. So it's it a would nice have been theory, but pretty I don't hard. Necessarily work. And this building, with its 40, nearly 50 foot ceiling, is purpose built just to roast. So wherever you've got that shape, I don't know, did you come from that end or that end? That one. So you, you may have noticed two of them in right, the middle room. Right, right. And one in the middle room. And another one there. And another one there. And so each one cranking through about a ton of seasoned oak a day. If you had a low ceiling, you'd end up cooking your cooks. And yes. Sure cook, yeah. cook, but doesn't necessarily do their best work. So it's purpose built to shed heat as quickly as possible. Even down to the fact that we're on the north side of the Great Hall, so we get slightly less sun than in the rooms. All purpose built. And then there was a separate group of rooms that are purpose built to do pies and pastries. And another group of rooms that are purpose built for the bulk boiling. And a separate building about where the bridge is today, just for baking the bread. You're looking at a food factory. Ingredients come in sure. one end, meals for 450, maybe even 600 people go out that end. Another little courtyard. They're everywhere, and the cool thing is here, almost nothing seems to be off limits except like the private offices. And I love that you can look in all the. It says private on the door. If it's private. Yeah, it says private if it's on the door, but most everything is open to the public unless it's in use.
This is the king's great bedchamber. Again, it's William the Third. Americans will know him as the William of William and Mary. The bedroom we saw before was more for being shaved and dressed and all of that, where he had public servants. This was more his private bedchamber where only his very closest companions were allowed to come with him and where he actually slept. So this is the king's closet, also known as his study, where he spent most of his day doing correspondence. And over there in the corner is the doorway to Queen Mary's suite of rooms, which mirror Williams. And here is King William's necessary room. And now we're going down the stairs. This was his back stairs, it said, to the red room. So King William created this gallery um, as a place to walk during bad weather, but also to grow orange trees during the cold season. They had to be brought inside. So this would have been lined with orange trees in his day, and I suppose they could have taken walks here in the winter or the bad weather and kind of felt like they were outside. But you can see the garden from here as well. So you've got these big windows all the way the length of the hall. Would have been quite pretty, I think, with the trees in here. So after Henry had Anne beheaded, they painstakingly tried to remove all reference to her, but they missed this one right here, her initials in the woodwork. These were all over this hall, but this is, this is one that they missed, so it remains to this day. I'm gonna try to zoom in so you can see this. See the head up there of the person? Um, those were all over the hall. There's another one over here, and they're all around the hall. And they were put there to remind people that someone was always watching and listening. And they were put up in the eaves, and this is where we get the word eavesdropper. This is the great watching chamber where courtiers waited for King Henry to come out. And there were guards in here to keep them out of his chambers.
This was the state bedchamber of the Prince and Princess of Wales, and um, it's where they conducted the morning levee, which is the morning ritual. And this rail, the gold rail here, was introduced to keep people back while they were addressing the prince and princess because the public was allowed in this chamber to come in and watch them get dressed and get up in the morning. Specifically for making a chocolate drink for the king. Huh. How about that? side of the palace you can really see the blending of the old Tudor style with the new um, as they moved into the Georgian and the Baroque periods so you've actually got three different periods of architecture and some of this was designed by Christopher Wren I'm not sure which parts but he um, pretty much has his fingerprints on everything of importance in and around London